already recovered and could already meet their financial obligations. Had the SPV been available earlier, banks could have helped businesses recover faster. This time, we are acting swiftly and proactively while our bank assets quality is still relatively solid. Financial institutions also need time to learn how to use these instruments. Your Honor, now is the time to act. Fireproofing, after all, is best done before the fire. Having learned our lessons from the Asian financial crisis, and because of reforms such as the SPP, our financial sector was able to bounce back better. Along with other international observers, The Economist magazine has recently affirmed the strength of our financial sector by ranking the Philippines sixth in its financial strength among 66 emerging economies. This strength is bolstered by our high investment grade credit ratings. Our ratings have endured a global tide of downgrades and remain at the highest levels they have ever been. We transformed our banks from a sector severely weakened by crisis to one of the strongest financial sectors among emerging economies. Today, we face another historic challenge and we must once again work together to overcome it. The continued strength of the financial sector will ensure that we will be able to recover faster than we did in the past crisis. We have studied the SPV law and the subsequent decisions of the Supreme Court on the matter and have taken them into account. The FIST Act we are proposing is an improved version. It will protect the financial sector from any lasting damage and ensure that credit will be steadily available during this crisis and in the recovery stage. At the same time, the proposed FIST provides safeguards for consumers. Once enacted, FIST will help the financial system mobilize credit, credit for the productive segments of our economy by keeping soured assets from spoiling the rest of the sector. It will also encourage the private sector, government financial institutions, and government-owned and all controlled corporations to help rehabilitate distressed businesses. By allowing banks to outsource the management of non-performing assets to asset management companies, FIST will help banks focus on what they do best, lending to sectors in need of credit. By keeping non-performing assets contained and managed, FIST will expand the amount of risks bank can take. This benefit cannot be understated in a crisis when lending to businesses is riskier, but also more urgently needed. This bill provides tax incentives to defray the transaction and transfer costs of non-performing assets to asset management companies. We believe that the economic benefits of strengthening the financial sector through this effort outweigh the fiscal costs of doing so. We are willing to forego revenues from 3.3 billion pesos or if all avail of the tax benefits to 13 billion pesos every year for the next five years to clear the bank's books and keep the economy going. The swift enactment of FIST will boost trust and confidence in the financial system. Banks are among our strongest economic assets. This is due to the prudent reforms enacted by different administrations and because of President Duterte's sound macroeconomic and fiscal management. An acting FIST will fortify the financial sector and keep it strong and stable for the difficult task of rebuilding our economy. Thank you very much. Thank you, Secretary Dominguez. Uh, before we proceed with our questions, we would like to ask uh, Governor Jokno, if he's present, to also give his opening statement or presentation. We thank the Senate Committee on Banks, Financial Institutions, and Currencies for giving Banco Central ng Pilipinas the opportunity to share its insights and position 
on the legislative measures relating to the enactment of the Financial Institutions Strategic Transfer Act. BSP appreciates the time and effort this committee has spent in order to quicken the enactment of this economic recovery intervention. BSP recognizes the objectives of FIST bill to help financial institutions in their bad debt resolution and non-performing assets management in response to the adverse impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on their financial operations. BSP supports the laudable objectives of FIST bill to induce economic activity and improve the liquidity of the financial system, enabling financial institutions to respond to the looming increase in non-performing assets. The enactment of the FIST law will assist the financial system perform its role of efficiently mobilizing savings and investments for the country's economic recovery, as well as its sustained growth and development. The banking system has built in buffers, which provide it with the capacity to internalize losses on their exposures, as well as continue with their lending and investment activities. There is, however, a limit to the risk-bearing capacity of financial institutions. Hence, the establishment of resolution frameworks, such as the FIST law, will ensure that distressed financial institutions have a mechanism to strengthen their balance sheet. The passage of the proposed legislation can help ease banking system stress. And through a joint government and private sector undertaking, it encourages the private sector, government, financial institutions, and government-owned or controlled corporations to help in the rehabilitation of distressed businesses. Through the sale of non-performing assets, banks will not have to incur costs related to the management and administration of distressed assets, activities that are best left to asset management companies. Liquidity within the banking system will increase since there's no longer, they're no longer to be tied in the non-performing assets. And finally, bank capital will be freed up thereby increasing the system's risk-bearing capacity and ability to expand investment and lending activities. Later on in my presentation, if time will allow, I will discuss the FIST bill business model and the necessity of enacting FIST bill. We see the need to improve the special purpose vehicle of 2002 in order to address the issues and difficulties encountered during the implementation of a SPAB Act and to make it more responsive to the present needs of the financial institutions in the context of the present crisis. Again, we thank the committee for giving BSP the opportunity to participate in the passage of this landmark legislation. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Governor Jocko. Before we proceed, I'd like to acknowledge the presence of Senator mm -hmm. Villar. But Senator Jokno, you mentioned that you do have a presentation. Perhaps we can run along and have that presentation already. All right. Uh, this is a, a lengthy presentation. I, I mean, we don't mind, but we just have to. All right. Uh, the following are the discussion points of my presentation for this hearing. First, the FIST bill business model, the necessity of enacting this bill, and the improvements from this of law for this bill. Uh, Go ahead, sir. The parties to the business model under the FIST Act. This business model is essentially similar to what we had during the implementation of the SPAB Act of 20, 2002. First are the borrowers that have credit transactions with financial institutions. These transactions eventually create non-performing assets for NPAs. Financial institutions are the institutional lenders. The financial institutions may include banks, quasi-banks, GOCCs, GFIs, financing companies, lending companies, investment houses, and other lending institutions with NPA or non-performing loan, real and other properties acquired. 
financial institutions then offload these NPAs to financial institutions, strategic transfer corporations. The financial institutions are required to give prior notice to the affected borrowers before and after the transfer of NPAs to the FIST corporations. The transfer is subject to the application of certificate of eligibility with the appropriate regulatory authority, which should be given within 45 days from application. The FIST corporations are stock corporations under the jurisdiction of the Securities and Exchange Commission. These are asset management companies that specialize in the resolution of distressed assets. The special purpose vehicles created under this PUB Act may qualify as FIST, subject to applicable rules and regulations. BSP, GOCC, and GFIs may establish FIST corporations, and they can own up to 100% of the FIST corporations. On the other hand, financial institutions can have up to 10% in the FIST corporations, but they are not allowed to have direct or indirect control over the FIST corporation. Foreign corporations can also qualify as FIST corporations subject to a maximum five-year possession period of real properties. Furthermore, FIST can infuse capital and extend financial assistance to borrowers to rehabilitate the latter's business. In order to protect the public, persons permitted to invest in the investment unit instrument of the FIST Corporation are limited to those that considered as qualified buyers under the Securities Regulator Regulations Code, which are essentially sophisticated investors who have the technical know-how about asset management companies. As the last leg of the model, the FIST Corporation can then transfer the NPAs they have acquired to third persons. In order to ensure effective implementation of the FIST bill and to prevent circumvention of its provision, the transactions earlier mentioned shall be subject to the scrutiny by the appropriate regulators, such as the BSP, the SEC, the BIR, and others. Now, this slide illustrates the transactions entitled to fiscal incentives under the FIST bill. True sale transfer by financial institutions to FIST corporation of NPAs. The transfer must be made within two years from the effectivity of the IRR or the revenue regulations, whichever comes later. True sale transfer by FIST corporation to third persons of the NPAs acquired from the financial institution during a two year entitlement period. In this leg, the transfer must be done within five years from the acquisition with the FIST corporation of the NPA. That's shown in payment by the borrower to financial institutions to settle their loan obligations. The transaction must be made within two years from the effectivity of the IRR or the revenue regulations, whichever comes first, comes later rather. The shown in payment by the borrower to the FIST corporations that have acquired NPAs from financial institutions during the two year entitlement period. Here that the shown in payment must be made within five years from the FIST corporations acquisition of the NPL. Under the FIST bill, these transactions are entitled to number one, exemption from applicable taxes like dog stamp, capital gains tax, creditable withholding tax, value added tax, and gross receipts tax as applicable. And second, reduce registration and transfer fees. Please note that these incentives are similar to what we had during this PAV Act. However, as an innovation, the FIS bill authorizes the Secretary of Finance to extend the entitlement periods in response to what we experienced earlier when an amendatory act was needed just to extend the periods 
in this PAV Act. The following are the primary objectives of the FIST bill. Number one, to respond to the looming increase in NPAs as a result of the pandemic. Second, the finance, to enable financial institutions to free up much needed liquidity for lending to productive sectors. And third, to encourage financial institutions to sell NPAs to asset management companies created as FIST corporations by granting tax exemptions and other fiscal incentives. The impact of the pandemic is significant. The results of a baseline survey conducted by the BSP on top banks on the impact of COVID-19 on their operations revealed the following. NPL ratio is estimated to double from 2.4% as of end March 2020 to 4.6% by end December 2020 as borrowers' capacity to pay may be weakened by disruption in the cash flows. Deterioration in asset quality is projected to reduce banks' consolidated capital adequacy ratio to 14.8% by end December 2020 from 15% as of end March 2020. The Philippines should draw lessons from our experience during the 1997 Asian financial crisis. The banking sector entered the 1997 Asian financial crisis with strong fundamentals. The banking system's cap capital adequacy ratio was above the minimum international standards of 8% and its non-performing loan ratio was a low of 4%. Since the NPL ratio of the banking system built up over time, there did not seem any immediate need for banking sector intervention. This delay contributed to the steady deterioration in the asset quality of the banking system with the NPL ratio of the banking system peaking in June 2002, five years later at 18.6%, 18.6%. The NPL of Philippine banks also markedly deteriorated compared to that of other banks in jurisdictions which aggressively implemented government intervention programs to shore up confidence in the banking system. The NPA or NPL ratio is also a lagging indicator of bank, banking system performance. Thus a high NPA or NPL ratio would already point to a severe weakness in the financial system and the poor state of the economy. High NPA ratios also adversely affect investor and depositor confidence, ultimately hampering the efficient conduct of financial intermediation. Moreover, empirical studies show that an increase in NPLs lead to a reduction in credit supply, a rise in unemployment, and slowdown in overall economic activity in emerging economies. As to the innovations introduced in the FIST bill, the covered financial institutions in the old SPOB were expanded in the bill to include lending companies as defined under the Lending Company Regulation Act of 2007. Other institutions licensed by the, B licensed by the BSP to perform credit granting activities include um, uh, savings and loan associations, pawn shops, and non-bank credit, credit card issuers, additional GFIs and GOCCs, as may be included by the Secretary of Finance. And by the way, abolished GOCCs were likewise removed from the list. While NSSLAs or pawn shops and non-bank credit issuers may generally be small in terms of size, the volume and amount of transactions number of customers catered to and extent of their network sufficiently create risk to the financial system. Hence, it is justified that they be similarly considered in the proposed bill with the objective of ensuring their safety and soundness. To encourage participation of foreigners, foreign fist corporations, which are not qualified to acquire or hold land in the Philippines, pursue one 
to the constitutional prohibition against foreign ownership of private lands shall be allowed to bid and take part in foreclosure sales of real property mortgages to them. In case the Fist Corporation is the winning bidder, it shall be allowed to take possession of the real property for a period not exceeding five years, but in no event shall the title of the property be transferred to such Fist Corporation. The failure of foreign Fist Corporation to transfer its rights to a qualified Philippine national during the five-year period will be met with penalty. The definition of true sale in the SPAV Act is amended in the FIST bill in response to difficulties faced with the implementation of the SPAV Act and to cater to the financial institution's needs considering the present circumstances. The following innovations are notable. First, additional clause stating that the true sale nature shall not be prejudiced by the agreement between the financial institution and the FIST Corporation on sharing of profits in accordance with the conditions pre prescribed in the IRR. Second, clarification that the transfer of NPAs transfer the full legal and beneficial title to the to and relinquishes effective control over the transferred NPAs. Third, clarification in the provision that the intention is to avoid the financial institution from having either legal or beneficial ownership of more than 10% in the FIST corporation. Fourth, requiring that the financial institution shall not have direct or indirect control and not just management as stated in the SPOB or the transferee FIST corporation. Fifth, increase the beneficial or legal ownership limitations of the financial institutions from 5% to not more than 10% of the transferee FIST corporation. The FIST bill provides for restrictions of the financial institution's ownership of the FIST corporation and prohibits them from having control over the financial institution. The transferor, financial institution, except BSP, GFIs, and GOCCs, must not have ownership, legal or beneficial, of more than 10% or have direct or indirect control of the transferee FIST corporation. The 90-day restructuring period in the old SPAB was deleted for the following reasons. If the financial institution want to restructure, then they may opt not to sell the NPL to the SPV. And the Bureau of Treasury's position that failed negotiations could encourage borrowers to preempt the NPL disposal by commencing a court action by voluntary proceedings. In such cases, the settlement or restructuring the NPL may trip provisions of the 2010 FRIA allowing courts to nullify certain transfers or payments made prior to commencement of rehabilitation insolvency proceedings. FIST bill includes a safeguard against collusion and fraud by providing that the parties to the transfer of NPA shall exercise due diligence. Any fraud, collusion, and irregularity shall be subject to the penalties under FIST bill and applicable laws, rules, and regulations. The FIST bill introduced a no injunction clause, such, as a, such that, quote, no court except the Court of Appeals and Supreme Court may issue injunctive relief on the transfer of NPAs, unquote. In response to the difficulties experienced during the implementation of SPAB Act, particularly issues with respect to possession of the NPAs. The proposed FIST bill likewise introduces a consumer protection clause whereby the FIST corporation is required to set up an appropriate consumer protection mechanism. Nine, the FIST bill covers assets that have become a non-performing as of 31 December, 2020. This can be considered to be moved to second quarter of 2021 in view of the impact of Bayanihan II. 
As to the authority of the Secretary of Finance, he may extend the application, of application period, entitlement periods, and cutoff period for NPAs by a maximum number of years originally granted here therein. Permitted investors of fist corporations, investment unit instruments are limited to any qualified buyer as defined in Section 10.1 of the Securities and Regulations Code. That ends my presentation this morning. Thank you very much. Huh? Sorry, 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 Secretary Diokna, if I press the wrong, uh, I mean, Governor Diokna, I press the wrong button. Let me uh, thank you for your presentation. Uh, the next one, before we open the floor for, uh, before we ask our questions, may we ask Secretary uh, Carl Chua to do his presentation? Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Uh, good morning to you and the Senators. I will just be very brief. First, I would like to thank the Senate for passing a package of reform, beginning with Bayanihan 1, uh, followed by Bayanihan 2, and now hearing the FIS uh, bill. I, I believe, uh, we in NEDA believe that the full package, including CREATE guide and the upcoming 2021 uh, budget would be important to helping us minimize the economic contraction this year to around 5.5% and help us recover next year to around 6.5 to 7.5%. So the first uh, thing I would like to emphasize is this package of reform is uh, very crucial so that we can address all facets of the issue, whether it is liquidity, solvency, emergency transfer, or support to firms. The second is uh, since the Asian financial crisis and our fiscal crisis in 1998 and 2004, we have built two very important pillars of our economic foundation. The first is the financial institutions or financial system. And the second is our fiscal institution or the, or the fiscal position. And these two are actually very crucial and are needed to go hand in hand to ensure that we achieve our development objectives. We in NEDA are particularly concerned not only with the macro uh, fiscal side, but also the micro side. Most of the higher NPAs and NPLs are actually exhibited by smaller banks, including thrift banks and cooperative banks, with NPLs already at 7% today and estimated by BSP to further increase to double digits. So in a sense, uh, this uh, FIS bill will actually be able to improve the equity of how we support micro, small, and medium enterprises. And finally, I would like to make a point without belaboring the uh, important contributions of BOF and BSP that we are doing this proactively to minimize the risk. The financial system is like the circulatory system of the body. We do not want to wait for a stroke or heart attack to happen. The moment we see signs, as Secretary Dominguez and Governor Ben Diokno mentioned, uh, because it is a lagging variable, the NPA and NPL, we need to proactively uh, push the uh, reform that we have presently uh, uh, put before you. So with that, we emphasize our full support for the FIS and looking forward to discussing with you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, thank you Secretary Chua. Uh, since that was a very a uh, short statement, uh, just a, basically a, a statement, an assurance of support. Maybe we can ask the president of the Bankers Association to do uh, a presentation or his brief statement uh, regarding this uh, proposed FIST bill. Uh, uh, good morning, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, good morning, Honorable Senators, uh, uh, Secretary Dominguez, Secretary Chua, uh, and Governor Diokno. Uh, this is simply uh, three pages that really amplifies um, the points raised by uh, um, Secretary uh, Dominguez 
uh, and Governor uh, Diokno. Uh, and I'd like to start by going back to 2002 when we, uh, when we did the, the first SPV Act. Uh, if you look at the uh, graph on the left, uh, you'll see that the Asian financial crisis ran in our country from 97 all the way through 2002. Uh, just before the Asian financial crisis, the banks were growing considerably. Uh, the banks had expanded the year before at the rate of 30%. And then the Asian financial crisis hit, and you'll see that in, 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 in 2001, the banking system actually shrank uh, by almost 30%. Now, you'll see the left, the left side is, 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 is a light pink. The right side is a light green. The light green really refers to when the SPAB law was in place. The, left, uh, the, the light pink refers to the length of the Asian financial crisis. And you'll see that the, uh, the, uh, the SPAB law coincided or helped uh, loan growth in the system. Uh, when the SPAB law was introduced, you saw that the uh, loan growth uh, began to become more positive and actually began to normalize uh, from 2005 onwards. Now, if you look at the right uh, hand side, uh, if you look at the right hand side graph, here we track NPLs. And you'll see that, um, as, as Governor uh, Diokno said, prior to the Asian financial crisis, the NPLs were in the order of four or five percent. And during the crisis, they rose all the way to 17, 18%. And then the SPAV law was implemented, and you see that it came down. That towards the end of the SPAV law, 2005, 2006, the NPLs were in the order of 4.9%. Now, what um, the authorities, what the DOF and the BSP are doing by introducing the FIS law at this time is they are allowing the green part of this graph to move left, to move left, uh, because we should not wait. Here you see the problems in 2002. We waited until the NPLs were already very high before we instituted the, the, the SPAB law. But by doing this FIS law, what you're actually doing is you are shifting that green part of the chart to the left. So hopefully the NPLs will not get us bad. If you move on to the next page, Arnel, what we do in the next page is we simply put some numbers as to how the original uh, SPAB law in, uh, of 2002, uh, how it performed. What happened is uh, we took 146 billion in non-performing assets. It was about 28% of all non-performing assets at the time. And they were sold to, uh, to SPABs. And really in, 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 in the form of, of two broad tranches. There was the SPV Act of 2002, which got rid of about 97 billion. And then the act was amended and it got rid of another 50 billion. Um, and that was quite, uh, that was quite significant. 146 billion is quite significant when you consider that the banking system at the time was only a little over 2 trillion pesos in size. Now, finally, just going to our last page on page three, uh, what we're trying to do here is uh, 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 Secretary Chua mentioned that NPLs could get to uh, the double digits, right? They could get to the double digits. So we just wanted to show you how the numbers translate. Uh, let us suppose that we got to about a 10% NPL rate, non-performing loan rate. The banking system today is a little over 10 trillion in size in loans, 10.4 trillion in size. So let's assume NPLs could get to a trillion, which is not such a crazy assumption when you think of how bad the situation can be. And then, so that's a trillion, you see that on the first line. And then the second line, let's assume that 40% of our NPLs are sold to FISTs. 
All right, so that's 400 uh, billion. They are sold to FIS at, an, a, at a, a price of 25% on, of FACE, 25 centavos on the peso, which approximates the sale prices that we saw back in 2002, 2003. So the proceeds from the NPL sold to the FIS are here at 100 billion. Now look at the capital that is freed up by this exercise. The capital charge on most NPLs and ROPAs is 150%. It's 100% on mortgage loans, but it's 150% for everything else. Since we have sold 400 billion, you're freeing up capital equivalent to 600 billion. And then when you add the 100 billion in sale proceeds, the total capital that's generated is 700 billion. Now, when you look at the banking system today, the leverage ratio is 4.3 times. That means every peso of capital produces 4.3 pesos of loans. So if we take the 700 billion in capital and we multiply it by 4.3 times, you're talking of a little over 3 trillion in loans. Now, that is about 30% of the size of the current banking system. That is more than the loan books of BPI and Metro Bank combined. So that is basically saying, if we get anywhere close to a trillion in NPLs, what this FIS law could do is create the equivalent of a BPI plus a Metro Bank. Think of the capacity that, that, gets, that gets generated and how it can help the economy. And we look at the BAP, we look at these numbers, and again, these are just guesstimates, but you can imagine it, you, you don't have to get far from here to generate a lot of value for the nation. Uh, that's our uh, presentation, uh, Madam Chair. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Kunsi. That was uh, certainly enlightening and very relatable. I appreciate your uh, presentation, very concise, and especially uh, picturing it for us. Even if it's just a guesstimate, uh, certainly it was based on the experience we had with this Pablo. So with that, I think that we have um, enough questions in our mind. I would like to in, uh, invite our senators to please uh, Field in your questions, if you have any questions for our resource persons. And then later on, we will ask uh, the others to also, uh, the other resource persons to give a statement. Any any other questions from our senators present? Senator Julon. Senator Julon. Yes, uh, thank you, Madam Chair. And let me thank our resource persons for those very enlightening presentations. Uh, just a few points. Um, we note the presentation of uh, Mr. Kunsin that out of the 520 billion of the NPLs and NPAs in 2002, if I recall correctly, uh, that were uh, eligible for transfers under this Pablo, only 28% or 146.2 billion were in fact transferred to these pub companies. <clears throat> uh, may we know the reasons why uh, this was uh, one? First question, why this is below expectation, we assume. Um, this below expectations, number two, why did it not uh, uh, come up, or why did it not? Uh, why will? Why did we fail to reach the goals at, uh, set at the time? I assume there were, and what are what are the corrective measures that are being adopted in this uh, fist law, which will address the uh, difficulties encountered. Uh, in the SPAB law. Uh, before our resource persons answer those questions, yes, uh, I pushed for the SPAB law in, when it was enacted 
but it was Ralph Recto who wrote the law, just for the record. Thank you very much. So can we have those, uh, can I have the responses? Uh, can I have the response uh, to those issues we raised, uh, Madam Chair? Madam Chair, may I be allowed to respond for the BAP? Go, um, go ahead, go ahead. Good, good morning, um, uh, Senator Drillon. We, uh, the 28% uh, of, of NPAs that, that took advantage of the, the SPAV law uh, is not too different from what you've seen in some of the other countries. What happened in, uh, in the Asian financial crisis is the banks wanted to resolve a lot of their loans themselves because they knew that if they sold the assets to the SPAV, that they would have to take capital write downs. The banks did not realize, sir, how bad this could be. And so they tried to resolve most of the loans themselves. And it was only the very bad and difficult assets that they sold to the SPAVs. Now, the lesson there was uh, the banks were probably a little too naive. They were a little too slow. Um, and I think now there's a realization that if a fist law were enacted, I think the banks would act much sooner. Uh, and especially in this kind of environment, sir, where the crisis is global. Uh, in the Asian financial crisis, it was the Asian countries that were looking for capital. The West was providing a lot of capital, but now there will be a real competition for capital. So I suspect the bank, the local banks, the Philippine banks will be much quicker at trying to take advantage of the FIST law. So what are our expectations on the um, uh, of the NPAs being transferred to the uh, faced companies, uh, given what we have today? Sir, I think the, the supply of capital will be more of an issue in 2020 than it was mm -hmm. in 2002, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because there will be a competition for capital. Uh, okay. so I, I, think, I think my best guess is that if we ended up doing 30 to 40 percent of the NPAs uh, via the FIST, that would be a good result, sir. All right. Uh, so I assume there were provisions in the old SPAV law which contributed to the very, to, to the less than ideal uh, results of uh, the uh, SPAV law. Can you, from your, from your end, uh, can you tell us what were the shortcomings in the old SPAV law and from your examination of the present FIST law, are these being addressed? Yes, yes, uh, Senator. I think the basic issue of the original SPAB law, I thought it was, frankly, I thought it was a brilliant law, uh, but I thought it was late. And it, had it come one or two years earlier, mm -hmm. the effect would have been much more dramatic and positive. And then I thought the timeline for the old SPAB law was very tight, which is two why years. there was an amendment. Mm -hmm. uh, and, yeah. and I think the current draft allows for a longer window and gives our Secretary of Finance uh, the, the ability to extend the SPAB law because these things are hard to put together. They're very complicated. Mm -hmm. uh, you're dealing in thousands of assets. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So you, the banks need a little time. I, I think a lot of the problems or the challenges of the old SPAB law are addressed now. And I will say, the, the SPAB law, when we did it in 2002, uh, was relatively new globally. So we were all learning. Um, mm -hmm. But now we have the benefit of, of seeing that. So I think this is a very good law that we're looking at now, sir. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Bong. I'll yield the floor, Madam Chair, to some other our colleagues who may have questions. I can come back later on if we still have time. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Julon. Um, Senator Villar and then Senator Recto. Senator Villar, unmute your mic, please. Uh, your mic, Diane. <laughs> maybe, maybe Senator Ralph first. Okay. 
Okay. Go ahead, Senator. Uh, yeah, good morning, Grace. Good morning, Frank. Uh, to our resource person, thank you for the presentations that you made. Um, just a few questions. Um, uh, well, Senator Grillon already uh, asked uh, a very important question. Now, what new provisions in this FIS law are we incorporating that is not in the SPAB law? Uh, can I address a question to any of the three resource persons? Um, uh, Mr. Senator, I think uh, the gentleman most familiar with this is uh, uh, Assistant Governor Capule of the Central Bank. Okay. Governor Jopno, would you like to respond to that? Yeah, I, uh, actually, uh, Mom, I presented it in my, uh, it's in my presentation. There are some uh, nine provisions that are new in this uh, could you could you could you put that again? Okay. Could you put that in the? There you go. Face improvement from the Spavlo, right? So the expanded coverage, the uh, participation of foreign investors, the definition of true sale, the prohibition on control. Good, good, good. Yeah, can we start one by one? Lang? Is there a presentation for that? The nine provisions? Yes, there is. Okay. Can we, can we take, a look, uh, take a look at that briefly? Yes. All right. Yeah. So we up? can have a discussion on, on this. Uh... Is, is it up? Okay, there you go. Number one is the expanded coverage. Number two is the participation of foreign uh, investors. One question on this expanded coverage. Huh? Okay. Are we allowing uh, the government to put up its own fist? Yes, yes we are. Because that's not found in the SPAB law. That's so here, founded. yes, government can buy assets or NPAs from uh, financial institutions, both private and public. Is that correct? That's correct. Even, even Banco Central can put up its own uh, uh, and why are we doing that? Because in the SPAV law, we allow the private sector to sort out their problems, in effect. But here we're saying that government will play a major role in buying these assets. Isn't there a risk to that? Uh, this is just for flexibility, uh, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, and then number two, huh? Uh, uh, let me reserve judgment on, on any of this at the moment. No? I just want to understand what is different from uh, FISC and SPAF. No? As correctly pointed out, I'm more or less familiar with FISC because I sponsored and authored this in 2001 with the leadership of our Senate President, then Senator Trilon. Okay. So on item number two, participation of foreign investors. Did we allow foreign investors in 2001? We did not, uh -huh. Your Honor. We did not, no? Okay. Yes. Uh, because of the constitutional limitations, no? Yes. Okay. And then on item three, true sale, we already had the true sale provision in 2001, <laughs> 2002. What's the difference? Yes. Mm. Without... Without... Uh, without profit sharing uh, on, on item three. Okay, but then in item four, we're allowing them 10%. Yes. That's, uh, yes, from 5% to 10%. Okay. Okay. And then why are we removing the 90 day uh, given to borrowers to negotiate the loan? So this is for simplicity, Your Honor. But shouldn't we also assist the borrowers? Now it's better that we tell the banks and the borrowers, oh, mag-usap muna kayo, 90 days. Yes, that, that's all. Of course, that's uh, at the discretion of the borrower and the bank. They can start from there. But uh, for some, some other transactions, they may decide to 
to uh, not not to restructure. Yes. Okay. Uh, and item six. Yeah, this is uh, to to pro to provide uh, to to make sure that the uh, parties involved are not gaming the system, okay, and make make collusion and fraud possible by law. And number seven, okay, number eight. What does consumer protection mean here? I think, uh, I think this Senator not, Rector, I think your assistant wants to. Uh, I think it's not covered under the old SPOG law, and we want we want to have a mechanism where uh, we can protect the consumer. Yeah, but uh, but uh, after in the bill, there's no mechanism. No? It's just a general statement, right? Okay, that's and right. Then, okay, applicability clause. Okay, question on the applicability clause. We know that these spams, more or less, based on your presentation, will hit a little less than 5%. Meaning to say all the assets that are non-performing as of December 31 are eligible to be transferred to a spam or to a FISC. What about NPAs after December 31? That, that, that's why we recognize that this may not be uh, enough. So we can consider moving the deadline to say- yes. Correct. Of 2021 yeah. because of the impact okay. of by yes. hand too, Your Honor. Yeah, and how long do you expect to 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 see uh, the the real NPAs or NPS in the banking sector? Siguro mga next year pa yan, di ba? That's right, and we also have provided uh, an escape clause where you give the Secretary of Finance the discretion to extend the deadline because in in the old SPAV law you you have to amend the law because of the need for the extension. Yeah, but that was passed immediately anyway. Uh, on this issue, the reason why we put two years here is to for the banks to act quickly, isn't it? That's right, Your Honor. To, uh, to that give... is the primary reason, no? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, so if we extend it, then they may dilly-dally. Correct. That's... Right? that's uh... Okay. Okay. Uh, and then qualified buyer. Why is it so important to have qualified buyers? Why so should that, there be so, permitted? So that, you know, the Sorry. buyers understand the risk. You, you know, later on, uh, some some people might might buy this uh, uh, IUIs, and then later on they will complain. They will file a a, a court case because they they thought they uh, they were uh, shortchanged or something. So. You got to be a qualified buyer as defined under the Securities and Regulations Code. So you need sophisticated buyers here. Yeah, who? I don't. I don't think these transactions are very sophisticated. Okay, uh, and who determines whether an investor is permitted or not? Uh, that's defined under the Securities Regulations Code, uh, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, just a few more questions. Huh? Where will government get the money to put up a fist? Uh, I think the GOCCs have their own uh, funds. BSP has its own fund, etc. You don't. We, I don't. I don't see any need for annual appropriation here, Your Honor. If that's that's the tenor of your question. Okay, um, okay, and uh, what uh, may I ask the Bankers Association representative, my good friend, uh, uh, Mr. Kunsing, um, uh, what, what type of NPLs do you sell to a FISC? Actually, almost, almost anything, uh, Senator Recto. Uh, what, what, uh, the the interesting thing about this, about the resolution of the NPL sold to a FIST, is that a very large percentage of the resolution is actually with the original borrowers. Okay, what happens is uh, the asset management company that buys these NPLs 
the first thing they tend to do is they go to the original borrowers and offer to cut a deal. And they're able to do that and banks are not able to do that because banks are afraid that if they cut a deal with the original borrowers, every other borrower will come and demand the same deal. So what happens is the, the asset management companies as third parties have a lot more flexibility. So they're happy to deal with almost any kind of NPLs. Um, and, and that's why this, this, this FAB or this FIS really allows for a much more efficient system. Understood. So are you saying that you can sell, or uh, let's say, consumer card loans? Yes, in, you could sell you could almost any obligation. Almost any obligation. Any obligation. And in the past, in 2001, were there spots that bought consumer card loans, for example? I, I, I believe they were. There were, uh, Senator. Um, but are they large or maliit lang yan? The, the, the numbers could be very large. The okay. numbers could be very large. Okay. Uh, I, I would assume that uh, those that more or less would be sold will be those with collateral. Yes. Not diba? necessarily. It's very not necessarily. Yeah. Not necessarily. I, I know how it operates in other jurisdictions. So yeah. I'm, I'm discussing in the Philippine context. Okay? Not necessarily, because very often a borrower, even in the Philippine jurisdiction, would be happy to settle with an AMTC in order to clear. Uh, the uh, coordinating mechanisms are in place. Mr. Chair, Your Honor. It's interesting, General, to hear that. Um, uh, I think somebody's mic is on, Senator Marcos. Is that you? Uh, okay. Oh. Please, please mute your mic. Okay. Unless you uh, want us to join in your discussion. Okay. Um, uh, so where were we? Uh, okay. So all all types of NPLs. Huh? Uh, you mentioned also that roughly the banks in 2001 took a 75% haircut. That's correct, sir. Okay. So 25 cents to the dollar or 25 cents to the peso. Right. Okay. Uh, is there anything in the bill that safeguards, for example, homeowners who may lose their homes? Well, actually, this actually helps homeowners retain their homes at lower prices. Because as I, as I mentioned, Senator, what happens is the asset management companies go back to the original home, home borrowers. Yeah. But that has tended to be the case. Um, and, and so in effect, they, the, the original home borrowers, home loan borrowers can settle at lower amounts. But the point I'm trying to drive at here is if you're willing to take a 75% cut on the pricing, uh, and I'm only focusing on homeowners, huh? uh, should, and then are we cutting the redemption period also for homeowners in this bill? No, no I, don't, I do not think so, Senator. Okay, because there's nothing in the bill not that protects homeowners as well. No, you need to say that. Uh, I understand that there is a one-year rule for homeowners not to be able to pay their loans. So I, I wanted to focus on that, no? yeah, because the, uh, to, through no fault of their own. Ralph, just just yes, on that part. Yes, Mr. Jalon is recognized. Yes. yes, in my view, the redemption period is maintained. In other words, uh, the uh, uh, the uh, the feast here would be under the same legal obligation as the financial institution which transferred the asset to the, uh, to the fist. Uh, and the borrower who maintains has, been, has the right to redeem within uh, one year as uh, it is presently provided. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you very much. One last question, and I'm sure Senator Villar wanted to ask some questions also. Um, uh, why is it that uh, in this bill, we are considering government to get involved in purchasing uh, non-performing loans. Why not let the market operate? Why not uh, let the private sector uh, undertake the necessary risk? Why subject government to any of these potential risks? Uh, uh, maybe the any of the resource persons can uh, 
then respond to the question. Because if we're saying that the SPA worked before anyway, as presented by the Banco Central and presented by the Bankers Association earlier. Senator. Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, from what I recall in the early 2000s, the asset management companies that, that, that acquired the portfolios from the banks were targeting returns from the mid teens to the low 20s, 15% to maybe 25%. Uh, and they set their prices targeting those returns. That's, that's a good return in a, in a very low interest rate environment. And, and, and so that is something that, that certainly the private sector might want to avail of, but I don't think we should preclude the government from making those kinds of returns. <laughs> Madam Chair, I disagree. Senator Jolon. <laughs> Just for the record, I do not think that the government should be making reasonable returns or, or, profit, or, or profit from this. I joined the questions of Senator Recto. I could not understand why government should be allowed to participate in the system. Remember, Land Bank and DBP, these are government banks that are eligible to, to put up the fist. But for government itself to, uh, you know, uh, participate in this system, questions in my mind like, where do you get the capital? Will we, will we, uh, will we uh, appropriate money? And as a matter of principle, government should not interfere, should not, should not participate in commercial transactions as contemplated in the feast. So I joined Senator Ralph. He didn't say it, but he already expressed... Uh, uh, <laughs> Doubt yes. as to yes, yes. I agree. Yes. Uh, may yes. I be recognized? Um, and finally, finally. Uh, yes. uh, in line with this, uh, Senator Rector, Rector, if you will uh, allow, yes. just quickly, maybe with the discussion, why should government be a part of it? Maybe I can ask uh, Mr. Kunsing, does he think that commercial banks will have enough capital uh, to be able to, to yes. support the, the endeavor of this? without the help of the government sector? I, it, it's very hard to tell, uh, Senator. Um, I do know that the quantums we're talking about now are very different from they were 20 years ago. Correct, correct. Yeah. You're, now, you're now talking of potentially a trillion pesos or more in, in, in assets like this. A few years, you know, back, back 20 years ago, you're talking maybe a couple of hundred billion. So the quantums are huge. What I think will happen is that the, if the banks participate, they might participate in the form of debt, but they would not participate in the form of equity. As first, there are limits. You see the 10% limit. Yeah. Uh, so they might provide financing for it. May, but, may, I, may I respond to this question, uh, Your Honor? Uh, this is Governor, a, Governor with the indulgence of Senator Ralph, is it? Under, yes, the, yes, yes. Re, yes. under the regional law, Republic Act number 9184, the BSP is already recognized as one of those eligible. BSP, the government financial institutions like GFIs, uh, uh, and my, 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 yeah, my, yeah, I agree, yeah, government, my, my, yeah. by definition, like a government agency should not be part of this. Uh, yes, uh, yes. My understanding is there. Corporation. Yes, my understanding there as of the SPA of 2001 is that, yes, government GFIs can sell their NPLs, but we did not see that they can invest, invest in, uh, that they in. be a SPA and that they can invest. Now, one last question uh, to, our, uh, to the president of the Bankers Association, my good friend. Uh, what, are the, what are Philippine 10-year notes today? What is the interest rate on a 10-year note? It's, 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 it's very low, sir. I mean, the, the governor has a better has a better sense, but it's very very low. These are the lowest interest rates I've seen in a long time. Correct. And, and that's what makes this different from all the crises that we've gone through, right? Well, what uh, because of low interest rates and a stable peso. Yeah. We're in a better shape than we were twenty years ago. Correct. Okay. Now. Uh, 
U.S. interest rates, a 10-year note is what? Less than 1%, 0.7% 7 of one, right? 70 basis points. Okay? And what the market is telling us is that it'll be hard to make any money for the next 10 years. <laughs> if you look at those spreads, right? So it's very risky for government to get involved in that sense. Uh, we're talking about deflationary pressures. And moving forward, it's even very possible that you have negative interest rates, as many of the countries in, the, in, in Europe are experiencing today. Uh, so it's a very risky uh, on, the, on the side of government too. No? Uh, but, you know, I agree that the private sector should be able to sort out this problem and allow them to buy, reduce the taxes, uh, that's all fine with me. I'm in support no? uh, of this measure, uh, but we'd like to understand uh, what are we changing and why are we changing it and what safeguards can we put in the bill as well. Uh, so with that, I thank our resource persons and uh, Madam Chair, thank you for the opportunity to ask a few questions. You're not leaving yet, Senator Rector, right? Something no, no, not interesting not might still come up. Uh, yeah, Senator okay. Villar is recognized. Uh, am I on? Do you hear me? Yes, yes ma'am. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I want to support the the what President Consing said uh, of the Bankers Association of the Philippines that uh, the, the SPAB during 2002 did not get much business because it came too late. I remember. Uh, the recession started in 1997, and by the time the SPAV came in 2002, those who can uh, take care of their problems have taken care of their problems. So, parang yung 2002, puro na lang ano yon yung parang yung mga hindi nakasolve ng problem, parang konti na lang yon. So, mas konte ang uh, ang uh, Nag-spab noon because it came too late. That's why it's good also that we are coming early so that these people will have an alternative. Kaya din ang mahal ng discount rate. They said uh, you have to discount your asset at 75% because yung mga MPL noon, parang yun ang ano na, the bad ones. Uh, because the good ones have uh, made arrangement with their banks to... Uh, to be able to fix their loans. I remember we experienced that also. By 2002, we have made the shon and pago to all our banks and we have settled all our loans by uh, giving them a real estate asset. So we didn't have to go to SPAB. Uh, so it's quite different because it came too late. And besides, I don't think uh, again, that, that will be so bad that you will only get 25% of your assets. When you sold, when you sell to the SPAF. and of course, it's very good that the foreign investors will be participating, because I think they will be attracted to the SPAF because they will make uh, more money here than just uh, investing their money where there is very less interest rate, as you said, and uh, just like Senator Recto, I don't think the government should participate in this anymore. Because as we remembered in 2002, uh, the government did not participate. It's the private sector. Uh, and there are many funds, foreign funds, local funds, that are willing to buy this uh, NPL and hopefully make money on it. So yun lang ang aking uh, uh, maia-add dito sa pagpasa natin itong fees bill. Thank you very much. Thank you, Senator Villar. Um, any other questions from the Senator? Senator Angara is recognized. Thank you, Madam Chair. Could I just ask a question from President uh, Bong Konsing regarding the leverage ratio in his hypothetical? How, was, how is the 4.3% computed? Uh, Senator, uh, good morning. Good morning. I, we, just, we just took the... Uh, the current loans in the banking industry today mm -hmm. and divided it by the current capital in the banking industry today. So it's uh -huh. a current, it, is, it is the current number. 
And does that change over time? I suppose it does, no? It does, but not by much. The, 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 what, what was it, for instance, uh, when the first SPAV law was passed? It was higher, sir, because the, the Philippine banks had less capital. So, so what, what whereabouts was it? Uh, I would guess maybe six or seven, but that would be okay. my guess. Okay, thanks. Um, uh, this is just a general question, Madam Chair, to the body, because I, I've uh, talked to a few lawyers who litigated some cases uh, regarding SPAVs. So um, maybe under the current draft bill, does the BSP still issue a certificate of eligibility or COE, uh, Governor Ben? Yeah, the answer is yes, Your Honor. Yeah, but uh, that's not necessary if you don't want to avail of the tax incentives to assign your credit, no? Because the civil code allows assignment of credit. Affirmative. Just to clarify, no? Yes, Because yes. that led to some litigation before. Eh? Some, uh, some would say without the COE, you cannot transfer it. But the civil code already allows it outside of the SPAB law. That's the, the answer is yes, Your Honor. So meaning it can be transferred outside? Yes. Could be. Under civil law, mm -hmm. under civil code provisions? Correct, correct. Uh, okay. And, and does this, uh, this current uh, draft... Does it uh, repeal Article 1635 of the Civil Code? As proposed. 1634, rather. 1634. As proposed, the answer is yes, Your Honor. Okay, because huh? that's another thing that uh, gave rise to litigation uh, when most SPAV transactions involved basket sales. So there was no specific price for uh, some properties. no. So it was difficult. It led to litigation regarding valuations. So that, that, that that's good. That's a good development, uh, Governor. And uh, again, a concern is about friction costs also because uh, I was told that uh, under the previous law, uh, even the BIR and the RDs would not uh, immediately implement the law. They would still ask for documents to to show that you're exempt. Can we add some? Is there is there a provision that already uh, dispenses with these requirements? I think you, that question should be answered by BIR, but, but that could be addressed through the IRR, uh, Your Honor. Do we have the BIR uh, present here today as Commissioner Tulay? I think that also you need to make a clarification or maybe stress uh, or support the statement of your representative earlier on that you're not in favor of the FIST bill, please clarify or support. Com Commissioner Dulay, BIR. I think they may have. Anyway, Madam Chair, uh, I, I don't need to, without, without uh, belaboring the point. Just to include a provision in the committee report, perhaps, that there's no need to obtain these this certificates of exemption issued by these uh, particular agencies when the law already provides that uh, the transfers are exempt from certain uh, friction costs and taxes. Pag ganun, wala nang kailangan, wala nang, I have to obtain the certificate of exemption because it's just, it's just red tape, eh, uh, Madam Chair. Yun lang, ang, yun lang naman ang point natin uh, I, I in, in, in asking that. Senator Angara, I think um, on the point that you're making, Commissioner Amatong, did you have uh, something to add? Mad Madam Chair, good morning. Uh, good morning uh, to the Senate. O on, uh, on Senator Angara's observation that you can transfer assets uh, for as long as you're not asking for the tax benefits, yeah. uh, you can transfer assets even without the FIST law or the SPAV law. Yeah. Aside from uh, provisions in the civil code, we also now have a, a securitization law that took effect after the SPAV law of 2002. So there is actually, Your Honors, a mechanism to uh, securitize uh, debts or, or loans already. What the FIST law does is it provides for these uh, tax benefits. Uh, and it's for that reason, uh, Your Honor, that there's a certificate of eligibility because these uh, tax benefits uh, are, are really only being provided uh, to uh, to loans or NPS, NPAs uh, that are eligible under the FIST law. Yung, 
within the limited time period because uh, in this case uh, of the, the impact of the pandemic. Whereas normally you could securitize your loans, but subject to uh, the taxes and the transfer costs uh, under the securitization law. Uh, I just wanted to point that out, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner F. Amatong. Uh, but I think we have to be clear, Madam Chair, that uh, you can still do that, exactly what uh, Commissioner Amatong said. Even if you don't want to avail of the tax incentives, you can still avail of it without the COE or the certificate of eligibility. That's, that's, the, that's the general point uh, being made, Madam Chair, because there was some dispute. It gave rise to some dispute that without the COE, you could not uh, assign your credit, which is not true. Uh, you can assign your credit, but you cannot avail of tax benefits without Correct. the COE. I think that's the point. No? Correct. Correct. Yeah. Um, Madam Chair, uh, on your second point uh, about uh, the position of the BIR. Yes, um, go Madam ahead. Chair. Yes. Yeah, I, uh, I saw a copy of the letter of uh, Billy Dulay, the commissioner, uh, to you saying that they fully support the, uh, this bill. Uh, they support it, but he's not, again, present. We're trying to get in touch with him. Uh, yes, but like I, I will check. Record. Yeah, no, I'm checking also, but there is a letter addressed to you, ma'am. I can uh, send it to you by uh, Viber or... Uh, oh, no, thank, yes. thank you, uh, Secretary. We haven't yes. received it yet, but okay. I think that it's good for him to be here so that we can also ask uh, specific questions uh, on yes. some of yeah. the provisions. Yeah, I'll check with the, I'll check on where he is right now. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Um, Last point, Angara. Madam Chair. Just one more point before I... No, please, I, go I, ahead. If I may. We have enough time. Yeah. Uh, there's also a point being made that uh, any proposed law or FIST uh, Act should provide that courts should not deny motions for substitution or intervention of the transferees of the NPAs. Uh, this is one technicality which many borrowers invoke to prevent a spab from enforcing its rights against borrowers. Uh, it's, a, it's a legal technicality, but it was uh, used. So these are the little things that uh, we learned, I think, from the years subsequent to the passage of the spab law. Uh, this this, this uh, anti-red tape, uh, uh, this, this, uh, red, this, this how, how borrowers were able to invoke uh, red tape to prevent the transfers, uh, Madam Chair, no? just pointed it out for uh, the information of the committee so they could insert the relevant uh, provisions. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, but Madam Chair, just one last point. Go ahead, Sandra. Uh, thank, thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Um, we, I know that there is also a bill um, that we'll probably take up in the same committee, the guide bill, okay? Having said that, what is the relationship? If assuming we allow the government to participate here to put up a SPAP, is there still a need for a guide bill? Uh, may I respond to that? Uh, yes. Uh, as you know, uh, the problems that are going to occur with the businesses are both uh, liquidity as well as uh, solvency problems. Liquidity problems is when your cash flow is insufficient to meet your, your needs. And ba basically, banks can solve uh, liquidity problems. However, some companies are going to experience solvency problems, which is basically where your capital is eroded and can no longer support uh, a, a, uh, a, a, a company. Uh, and uh, for for companies that are systemically important for the, for the country, I think the government has to have an ability to be able to uh, help these, uh, sol these companies with solvency problems. Uh, this, this happened in the U.S. with the TARP law, where you know, a systemically important companies such as GM and other large firms uh, went for, uh, uh, for rescue packages. Now, also, uh, unlike the U.S., we don't have that ability to do so. So we need a, a law specifically 
for those uh, companies. And incidentally, uh, once if if we get the approval to establish those uh, a a guide com a company under the guide law, we will invite uh, private investors and multilateral investors to participate in this, and that should be able to give uh, the this particular institution a uh, depth in analyzing uh, problems. So. That will be the start of, uh, and we need uh, to start it. However, uh, rather than you know just leave it to the private sector, and certainly banks cannot uh, cannot solve solvency problems. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for that response. Huh? Uh, no, I was just thinking that assuming we allowed government to participate under the fees, wouldn't it be cheaper for government to participate under the fees than under guide? Uh, I think you need uh, flexibility and the more tools we have in our, uh, in our toolbox, uh, the better we can respond to uh, the problems that are brought about by uh, this, this present crisis. Thank you very much, uh, Secretary. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Senator Angara, do you have additional questions? No, I'm we done. Thank now, you very much. I'm done. Thank you, Madam now, Chair. We have now uh, Commissioner Dulay uh, logged on again. Uh, Commissioner Dulay, would you like to make a statement? I think uh, we have some questions also regarding your official position on the FIST. Good morning, uh, Madam Chair. Yes, good morning, sir. We registered since 10.30, but unfortunately, when it was my time to be called, uh, there was a glitch in the computer. We apologize, uh, Madam Chair. No worries. We're, we're glad that you're, you're present now. First, we would also like to apologize for my absence uh, during the last hearing. We assured the chair and the members of the committee that uh, we are not taking this hearing lightly. Uh, having said that, uh, we sent an official uh, letter to the chair that the BIR is fully supported of the FIST law together with the position made by uh, the Department of Finance, the Banco Central ng Pilipinas, Bureau of Treasury, and all the others. While we have uh, stated also that uh, the tax incentives may affect our uh, revenues in the terms of foregone revenues. But on balance, we believe that the objectives of the bill uh, will far outweigh the effect on our revenue collection. Uh, as to the uh, matter raised by Senator Angara earlier, I think uh, there are certain matters that we can address through the revenue regulations and the IRR. Uh, I think the point there is that uh, without the certificate of exemption, they cannot avail of the incentives given by the law. So our commitment is to be ready. Uh, I heard during the deliberations that uh, it took time for the SPAV 1 and 2 to be implemented. We can assure the committee and uh, the chair that once the law is approved, we will see to it that the revenue regulations and the IRR be issued out uh, maybe within the next six months because I understand, I was informed that the IRR for SPAV 1 was issued, I think about two years after. So, we joined the uh, other uh, members and uh, the Department of Finance and the Banco Central and all the other agencies in supporting the early passage of the fish bill. Thank you, Madam Chair. Well, that, that's uh, reassuring now, at least Commissioner Dulay. Perhaps what we can do, uh, we hold your commitment that you will act on it as quickly as possible should we pass this bill. 
uh, maybe we can have a continuous technical working group uh, to bring the different agencies together so that you can have a harmonious and more effective IRR uh, with uh, the help also of the legislative branch just to ensure that the implementation of this will be in a timely manner. If you can send, maybe if you cannot always attend our technical working group, you can send somebody who is knowledgeable and um, uh, with regards to this uh, bill. Who, who did you send the last time? We, uh, again, uh, Commissioner Dunay. Well, during the last time, Your Honor, uh, there were four hearings called by both Congress and the Senate. And uh, my, my people were spread thin, to say the least. Unfortunately, the one assigned uh, to attend uh, your hearing, uh, they were not uh, brief, I must admit, about our position. So I extend my apologies again. For that, uh, although although I, I can appreciate also her perspective because, of course, the, the concern of the BIR is revenue collection. So having not had uh, the proper briefing as to the position of the BIR and the Department of Finance, uh, logically, she would say if this will be less of a collection for the BIR, for, for the revenue of the, the Treasury, then clearly common sense would say that they, they're not for it. But as you mentioned, you will actually be able to make this up because if the companies are not making money, there's no revenue collection anyway, correct? Yeah. Thank you, Madam Chair, for your okay. understanding. All right. Um, any other questions, Senator yes. Gachalian? Uh, uh, Senator Julon. Yes, just a few questions on uh, Commissioner Dulai. Uh, there are certain provisions in the... Uh, Ease of Doing Business and the Anti-Red Tape Act, which, would, uh, uh, which provides that the failure of the agency to act within a certain period will, uh, after the application is filed, uh, would uh, result in the, uh, uh, in, if, in the approval uh, of such application. Uh, yes. May I know the position of the BIR on this in relation to the uh, proposed measure that we are discussing today. We will, uh, uh, thank you, uh, um, sir. We will address this through the revenue regulations in the IRR, because uh, we are aware that uh, the limitations imposed by the ARTA, the Anti-Red Tape Act, uh, we have to admit that there is some difficulty in complying with the deadlines being imposed. Yeah, by you them. better you better express your views, uh, Commissioner Dulai, because you cannot revise the ARTA through BIR regulations. So you better tell the committee uh, your views on this point, because then without the uh, that issue being addressed in the proposed feast law, ARTA will apply. So the yes, uh, uh, yes, sir. Maybe uh, if you will allow us to come out with our position paper on that particular issue, we would appreciate yeah. it, sir. Yes, uh, we would. Uh, you know, on my part, I'm going to speak for the committee, but uh, I would like to see the position of the bear on this point because it's a very important feature of the bill. How quick we can act on these uh, applications. Yes. So we'll await that position paper. Thank you, sir. The other so, issue... Senator, just to clarify, Senator Julon, you're asking for a, uh, a position paper from the BIR with regards to... With regards to the uh, deadlines and, and, and uh, consequences uh, found in the anti-red tape law, which, uh, which says that failure to act, I think, within seven working days from the time the... The is completed, it is deemed approved. And uh, I'm already asking the BIR if that they can live with that. They said we cannot. <laughs> so that's why I would say yes, that he submits his uh, position paper to the committee for the committee to consider that uh, particular aspect. Yes, Commissioner Dulai, would you be able to submit to that uh, the position paper being requested by next week? Yes, yes by yes. next week, Madam Chair. Thank you. 
so okay, that uh, the, you, community, the community can look into this and see whether we will provide for another rule other than what is in the Anti-Red Tape Act on, insofar as uh, the feast of transactions okay. are concerned. Okay. Thank yes. you for clarifying that, Senator Julon. Go ahead with your question, sir. Your yeah, the question. other question that I raise is uh, <clears throat> the uh, present bill provides that the feast shall be organized in accordance with Republic Act 11232 or the revised Corporation Code of the Philippines. Mm -hmm. We authored this bill and pushed for its passage by the Senate. Uh, one important feature of the, uh, of, of the revised Corporation Code is that um, you, we now allow incorporation of, a, uh, or we allow a one-person corporation. A one-person corporation, meaning that uh, you know uh, the 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 good chairman can can create a corporation without looking for uh, additional uh, uh, incorporators. Now, <clears throat> can a one-person corporation be created? Uh, can the feast be incorporated as a one-person corporation? And we are raising this because under the corporation code. Uh, banks, quasi-banks, uh, pre-need, trust, insurance, public and publicly listed companies, and non-chartered government-owned and controlled corporations may not incorporate as one-person corporations. May we have uh, the view of the uh, central bank or wh whoever uh, resource persons to clarify us on this, whether or not uh, uh, the uh, fist companies can be organized as a one-person uh, one corporation. The SEC perhaps can clarify this. Uh, thank you very much, Madam Chair. Um, uh, as, as the good senator pointed out, uh, most financial institutions are, are required to be incorporated, uh, not as a one-person corporation because of the way they're structured. But in the case of the FIST, uh, in, in theory, it's just a shell uh, vehicle. Um, to be honest, Your Honor, we haven't really discussed this in, uh, extensively internally. I, I think the the more practical issue with respect to the FIST is its ability to raise capital in order to acquire uh, the the, uh, uh, the the NPAs or NPLs. Now, uh, in theory, there's no reason why a one-person corporation could not uh, generate that capital uh, either through the issuance of the IUIs uh, or, or some other debt mechanism. But um, off the top of my head, Your Honor, it, it would seem difficult for a one-person corporation to generate the kind of capital necessary in order to uh, acquire. However, uh, on, on the other hand, um, uh, it, it's much faster to... Uh, uh, to to register a, a one-person corporation than a uh, than a normal corporation. But having said that, Your Honor, it might not be practical uh, to have one-person fists. Yeah. So so you, you answered from both sides of the question. But can 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 we have the official position of the SEC on this matter so that uh, you know we can be guided when we finalize this uh, this bill? Your Honor, in the position paper that we submitted, uh, the suggestion was to exclude one-person corporations from. All right. Okay. Uh, at least we don't. Okay. How how about the perhaps from the Department of Finance or for the BSP? What is your position in this one-person corporation? Uh, we defer to the SEC. Okay. Mm. Yeah, for our part, uh, we, uh, we will defer to the SEC. And basically, I think uh, they are right uh, not to allow uh, one-person corporations uh, for this measure. Thank you. Well, because Thank you, that's, Senator it, that's an important... Senator Ralph, uh, I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. Senator Ralph, do you have anything on this yeah. point? Uh, no, not, not on this point. Yes. Not on this point. Go ahead. Uh, sorry, Senator Julon. Uh, I, have, uh, I, I yield the floor to to the real author of this, Pablo. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, um, before, just, just, before, yeah. Actually, Senator Marcos also uh, was raising her hands. Would you 
allow Senator Recto to go ahead first, or would you? Senator Marcos can proceed. Okay, Senator Marcos. Thank you, Senator. Such a gentleman all the time, huh? Basta, it's an entirely different topic, so uh, okay, right. lang. Okay. Um, yeah, sure, we can always... Uh, okay, go Madam back. Chair. No, I just wanted to bring up um, to the body's um, uh, notice the um, priority that uh, the central bank governor gave in his uh, presentation to expand, to expand uh, all those who could be included under this. Um, I have requests as the head of economic affairs um, for the uh, section 3D on the enumeration of credit granting institutions. There is a request that the insurance companies also be included in, in, um, in, the, in the FIST law or the SPAV law, um, given that they are actually included in the enumeration contained in Bayanihan 2, for example, in the 60-day grace. What is the thinking of uh, the central bank and the other authorities here uh, regarding the inclusion of insurance companies? I understand that the Insurance Commission has their own position paper and... Uh... We're inclined to uh, agree to their position paper, Your Honor. Uh, may, we have, uh, may we have an idea exactly uh, what that position is, to include or not? To include, to include. Uh, to include na rin. Yes. Okay, maraming salamat kasi malaking bagay sa kanila yun. Um, another, uh, another concern that's uh, been raised is uh, with regard uh, to the uh, experience um, in the, under the old SPA, um, of a consistent pain point for the managers of our SPBs um, in that uh, they were unable to conduct proper due diligence on the NPLs uh, due perhaps to the natural reluctance of banks to share borrowers information notwithstanding the uh, execution of an NDA. And then this problem was uh, further um, uh, worsened by the passage of the data privacy where you had to get uh, the uh, uh, permission uh, to acquire the information and that consent could be withdrawn anytime. Um, is there a possibility to carve out um, an exemption here uh, for very uh, specific purposes uh, of conducting uh, due diligence on SPBs, um, on NPLs, I'm sorry, uh, that are being offered to the managers of SPBs, an exemption for the, from the Data Privacy Act, would that be something that would be prudent and wise at this juncture? They've complained about this many, many times. Uh, you can, you can uh, include that in the law itself as an exception to the anti-privacy uh, law. So, so the, cent the central bank would have no uh, objections to this, Governor? No, we don't have any objection. I see, because uh, that was a consideration as well. Um, thank you very much, and uh, I'm uh, glad that you support as well the exemption from uh, the operation of the civil code, given that it was further strengthened, um, as uh, stated before, by the Eagle Ridge decision. And it's a matter of uh, great concern to everyone because it uh, sort of um, uh, really diffuses the effectivity of any news, Pablo. Thank you. Those, those were the uh, only points I had remaining. Thank you. Thank you, Secretary. Uh, thank you, Senator Marcos. Uh, we have Senator Ralph. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. No, just one, one last question, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, will the SPAV or FISP, is it considered as a financial institution? Could we ask maybe the BSP governor? As defined, uh, I think it's not a financial institution. It is not. Only an asset management company. Correct. Can it can it provide credit? It can borrow money and guarantee credit, yes. It can guarantee credit. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. All right. Um, maybe you have a, any other questions from our senators present? Senator Drillon? Yes. Uh, just for the record, can we have the legal justification 
for allowing disqualified entities, uh, because they do not meet any national requirements, allowing them to, to participate or to, to in a face, uh, uh, for example, uh, in the cases of real estate, they are certified to be in possession, uh, but not ownership. Uh, can, uh, can, can, can a resource person spread into the record how we can justify this uh, in the light of uh, the nationality provisions in our constitution on holding of real estate? Okay. Uh, any other questions? No, no. Can we, just, can we ask our resource persons to spread it to the record uh, if this is a, uh, a valid provision, given the fact that only corporations, 60% of which is owned by Philippine nationals, can acquire real estate. And uh, the, the proposed measure allows them possession, uh, allows these disqualified corporations a possession uh, for five years. Uh, may, may we have for the record, uh, if this is consistent with the constitutional provision on uh, the qualification of the holders of real estate. So who in particular would you like to- uh, Anybody, uh, anybody. Uh, yeah. I understand uh, your honor that it is in the uh, Foreign Banks Act and the Rural Banks Act. So it's consistent. All right. So, uh, okay. How about, uh, actually, I, I, I have a question on the anti-dummy issue. Uh, to the SEC based on the same NTRC report, another factor that contributed to the failure of uh, SPAV 2 involved the anti dummy law because some banks have resorted to setting up and dealing with their own SPV instead, which is not legally permissible under the SPAV Act. How do you propose to address this in this? Uh, thank you very much, Madam Chair. So, Madam Chair, as, as you uh, might have noticed, we, we now have uh, uh, provisions, as discussed earlier, on, on uh, anti-collusion and fraud. So that if, uh, first of all, under the FIST C bill, uh, under the FIST bill, uh, there, there should be a true sale from a bank to the SPV, even though the bank can only hold, uh, whether as a legal or beneficial owner, only 10% of the SPV. Anything more than that uh, is prohibited. Now, if the bank uh, undertakes some kind of mechanism to circumvent that, uh, that, that would be considered uh, fraudulent and subject to the penal provisions of the uh, FIST uh, law. Senator Dulon, are you, would you like a statement also with regards to your question on the ownership? Would you like to hear from the Secretary of Finance or? Uh, well, according to uh, Governor Jokno, this uh, uh, this is allowed under certain statutes, and uh, uh, we, re uh, we will look, check into this uh, in order to uh, justify the provision in the bill uh, on the uh, qualification of, uh, uh, of, of, of disqualified corporations from holding possession for a period of five years. Yes, I don't need anything else. Uh, my question has been answered, uh, Madam Chair. Okay. Um are other senators present today? Have any other questions to clarify? There's none. There's none. So perhaps um, we have here some agencies that haven't spoken yet. Um, the Philippine Competition Commission submitted the market analysis requested by Senator Angara. Uh, we also have uh, the card bank to represent uh, borrowers' concerns. Maybe we can we can ask the card bank representative to to give a statement with regards to the borrowers' concerns because we are actually legislating this for for them uh, for to bail out a lot of them. So could we have you speak, sir, the representative of card bank? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Senator Po. Good uh, morning po sa ating mga senador, pati po sa ating mga sekretary ng, depart ng different departments kay Secretary Dominguez, kay Secretary uh, Jokno, at uh, 
sa iba pang mga agencies. Uh, kami po ay sumusuporta, kagaya ng nasabi ng aming presidente sa Bankers Association of the Philippines, sumusuporta po kami dito sa FI, uh, sa FISH bill. At po ay napakalaking bagay para sa amin, lalong-lalo na sa microfinance institution. Dahil po ito ay uh, kasama na rin po ang hindi lamang ROPA, pati yung NPL, both secured and unsecured loans. At ito po ay maganda rin po sa mga distress uh, companies uh, kasi po marirehab siya ng gusto. Uh, at yung mga borrowings can be converted to equity or can be restructured. Maganda rin po yung panukala tungkol sa mga tax uh, uh, incentives and benefits. Kanya lang po, nice ko lang pong uh, iparating na hindi po ata napasama doon sa expanded FIs yung microfinance institution particular yung yung NGO microfinance kasi po yung NGO microfinance na regulated ngayon ng SEC under MNRC ay humigit kumulang ay eh, meron pong 9 million family clients ito po ang total outreach at ito po ay humigit kumulang ay 60 billion ito pong mga moratorium na nagaganap ay malaking tama po sa liquidity ng mga microfinance institution, lalo na po yung maliliit. We're considered as the last frontier from the bigger banks to the vulnerable poor. Kanya, sana po naman ay maisama rin ang NGO microfinance institution doon po sa expanded financial institution coverage. Maraming pong salamat. Maraming salamat, sir. Actually, also of interest, one of our resource persons present here today, Attorney Bugayan uh, of Philippine Investment II, uh, was an SPV um, at the time. And I would like to ask, what were the difficulties you encountered with the old SPV law? And also, uh, there was an SPV which Senator Aimee raised Uh, before, which was involving a big, big Villa Vicencio case. So maybe we can have uh, Attorney Bugayan to, to... Yes. Yes, sir. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning. Yes, sir, yes, Your Honor. Good morning. Uh, with regard to your queries, uh, Your Honor, since, uh, just to be candid, Your Honor, we were just Uh, we just received the invite just yesterday, Your Honor, and uh, as much as we would like to share our insights, Your Honor, with regard to uh, improving the SPAV law or the FIST law, Your Honor, uh, we are, we, may, may, may we just be uh, given the privilege, Your Honor, to maybe submit a memorandum, Your Honor, uh, so we can share our insights with regard to improving the SPAV and improving the FIST law, Your Honor. Um, you, you may do, of course, you may do so, but but based on the, your experience in the past, uh, just uh, your recollection, do you have any? Well, we have uh, we have actually, Your Honor, many to mention, Your Honor. Uh, some was already, some were already uh, mentioned by the good Senator Angara, Your Honor. Uh, some of the issues that we would like to uh, present in this honorable body, Your Honor, is like issues pertaining to the privacy laws. Does our COEs, Your Honor, in uh, creating a fair, transparent, and efficient due diligence process. And maybe also, Your Honor, some ideas to the tax implementation with the BIR, Your Honor. And uh, as also mentioned by the good Senator Angara, Your Honor, we also share his observations earlier that uh, being in the forefront of uh, this law, Your Honor, we have experienced many uh, litigation experiences, Your Honor, uh, that... Uh, pertain to the SPAV law, Your Honor, and its incompatibilities with certain existing laws like the Civil Code, uh, more particularly 1634, Your Honor, and also some issues of the De Department of Agrarian Reform, Your Honor. Uh, and if we are given the opportunity, Your Honor, may we just submit uh, our memorandum or a written memorandum, Your Honor, to reflect our insights and uh, suggestions, Your Honor, to improve this, this law, Your Honor. You may go ahead. Uh, Senator Rector is recognized. 
thank you, Madam Chair. No, I just wanted to ask the representative from a spa uh, company. Yes, no? uh, how have you assisted borrowers in the past, Maman? Well, uh, Mr. Senator, we have a lot of... Uh, Actually, Your Honor, we have a lot of uh, borrowers, Your Honor, and some of them we have uh, successfully uh, settled, Your Honor. So we have a good uh, amount or number of borrowers, Your Honor, that we were able to help uh, res resolve their uh, their loans, Your Honor. So we have a good amount of our por uh, por portfolio, Your Honor, that we have successfully uh, helped and restructured our borrowers, Your Honor. So... In, in that point, Your Honor, we, we have uh, assisted a lot of our borrowers and I think uh, we, we can also in the future, Your Honor, help more borrowers, Your Honor, resolve their loans, Your Honor. Yes. Could you provide us some of the data in the committee? And second, what about homeowners? Uh, did, you, did you purchase in the past, let's say, uh, non-performing assets, homes of families, that were foreclosed and did you give them a better deal for them to stay in their homes and so on and so forth? Yes, Your Honor, we, we have, Your Honor. We, we can provide you with that information, Your Honor. We have borrowers who are on the brink of losing their homes, Your Honor, but we were able to help them out. And uh, of, actually, Your Honor, in the course of our dealings with our borrowers, we also have obtained uh, many friends, Your Honor, because of our efforts to help the borrowers, Your Honor. So uh, we have these types of uh, accounts, Your Honor, that we were able to resolve favorably and uh, also help the borrower, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, yeah, could you provide us some of these examples no? uh, to the committee as well? No? And then finally, uh, you mentioned about court cases. Right? Yes, Your Honor. Those court cases are with whom? The borrowers? Uh, yes, Your Honor. We have existing court cases, Your Honor, where we uh, we are dealing with the borrowers, Your Honor, some collection cases, some foreclosure cases. And uh, most of the problems that we encountered, Your Honor, like what, what was mentioned by the good Senator Angara, Your Honor, one is our substitution issues, Your Honor. Most of the courts, uh, they really are stringent in uh, letting uh, SPVs uh, be substituted in those cases, especially if the cases are already decided, Your Honor. So uh, there, there are instances where we really have or we encounter difficulties in implementing decisions against borrowers because uh, under the law, Your Honor, uh, if a case is already decided, uh, substitution is no longer possible. And another point, Your Honor, that we encountered in these court cases is the application of uh, 1634 of the Civil Code, uh, your good senator, because under Article 1634 of the Civil Code, it allows uh, the debtor to just reimburse uh, the creditor or the SPAV for whatever the SPAV paid to the FI that transferred the, uh, the account to the SPV, your honor. And uh, if that will be the case, your honor, then I guess it just defeats the business. Or I, I, I really don't want to say that it is a business, your honor, but uh, ultimately, it defeats the business of the SPVs, Your Honor, if they, if such borrowers are allowed to avail of 1634. Given that if uh, this said article is to be applied, Your Honor, then they will only be, uh, they, they will only allow the borrowers uh, to reimburse the the SPAV for the amount that the SPAV paid for to the FI, Your Honor. So. Uh, those are only some of the issues that we encountered uh, being in the forefront of the, the law, Your Honor. And uh, we also have some experiences with the DAR, Your Honor, with the Department of Agrarian Reform that we would like to share also if we will be allowed, Your Honor. Uh, one of the pressing issues that we also experienced with the Department of Agrarian Reform is that uh, the land holdings uh, threshold, Your Honor, under the Department of Agrarian Reform, uh, it is uh, currently it is uh, pegged at 5,000 hectares, Your Honor. But given the business of the SPAV, we know that uh, the SPAV uh, in its dealings can acquire more than five hectares, Your Honor, of property. So this is a problem to us, Your Honor. So the DAR is uh, actually uh, covering some of our properties, Your Honor, because 
Uh, we have already reached this threshold 5,000 hectare limit, Your Honor. And maybe... 5,000 or 5 hectares. Hectares. Sorry, Your Honor. 5 hectare five limit. Hectares. Your Honor. And maybe we can address this under this, this law, Your Honor, because it is really one of the more pressing issues that we we have been encountering as a SPAB, Your Honor. Yeah. Finally, did, did you also buy, uh, uh, let's say, consumer loans or credit card receivables? Yes, Your Honor. We also have the those types of accounts on uh, under our portfolio, Your Honor. Uh, however, uh, being some of them uh, clean loans and everything, Your Honor, we have... A more we have more success rate, Your Honor, in terms of secured loans uh, versus our clean loan portfolio, Your Honor. So we we also do handle that, Your Honor. But most of our problems we encounter with those secured loans, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, okay. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair. Thank you to our resource person. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. So we will look forward to your submission, sir. Uh, yes, Your Honor, if the we, recommendation. May be, we may be given maybe until next week, Your Honor, we can submit our insights and uh, suggestions to improving the SPABLO, Your Honor. Okay, I think Senator Marcos is... Uh... Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I'd uh, just like to... Um, enlist attorney Bugayong's help. Um, certainly, um, as mentioned earlier, uh, I brought it up the last uh, meeting, uh, our concerns that uh, section 1634 of the civil code is a real curveball. And uh, honestly, the um, court uh, case of Eagle Ridge did not help because it really underlined and um, enforced 1634. So yes. perhaps what I would request from him is a uh, is language. Perhaps to lungan tayo a draft because uh, you are at the forefront at SEC of uh, going against that. Perhaps in your uh, submission, please include possible language uh, for this. Uh, secondly, I'd like to suggest with the DAR issue, an additional proviso. Um, there is already um, something called agri-ventures. And uh, I think this is something that could be invoked here for foreign owned or uh, other such corporations so that uh, we also could uh, in, impose this for land holdings um, owned by Filipinos, kapag umabot na dun sa threshold ng five hectares, there is such a thing now, um, which is the Agri-Ventures Administrative Order under DAR that we can invoke perhaps to uh, make our case stronger for uh, plantation type uh, investments by foreigners and even by Filipinos. We should explicitly name uh, that administrative order or uh, that package under DAR. Uh, thirdly, I wanted to ask uh, Attorney Bugayong further, um, following Vic Vic Villavicencio's uh, case, do do we really need to put uh, something here about the anti-dummy law? Was there a real conflict or talagang uh, nagkabukuhan lang sa presyo? Actually, Your Honor, to my knowledge, uh, that case uh, has already been dismissed, Your Honor. But of course, Your Honor, we are in favor. Yes, I mean, I know that it's been dismissed and parang presyo talagang pinag-aawayan sa bandang huli. Pero I just wanted to know, is there a real uh, possibility that uh, we conflict with the anti dummy law here? Well, yes, Your Honor. I, I believe, Your Honor, that uh, there is also a real issue in terms of the anti dummy law. Uh, for the consideration of uh, the fist law, Your Honor. Uh, we, we will be more than willing to cooperate, Your Honor, should, should you need our insights or uh, yes. cooperation, Your Honor, in terms of maybe exploring possible options of how to further harmonize the anti dummy law with uh, the fist law, Your Honor. Yes, like uh, Senator Drilon, I have concerns uh, that uh, we steer clear of constitutional violations and foreign ownership of land, and therefore we should make it very explicit, even though, as uh, the governor of the central bank has mentioned, it's already uh, indicated in several banking laws. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Thank you. And um, I think Senator Marcos here... Um, as she requested for you to help with the language since you have direct in experience with the SPV, maybe you can join our technical working group um, as a representative later on when we do refine the provisions in the bill. 
attorney so, design. Mayor, we, we would be honored to be included in that group, Your Honor. Senator Marcos, did you oh, want to add something? No, nothing more. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. All right. Um, did we ask already card ban? Yes, ma'am. Oh, we did. That's right. Okay. So any other questions from our colleagues present before I adjourn this hearing? Uh, Madam Chair, I have a quick question. Uh, Senator Gachalian is right. Yes, Madam Chair, I just want to expound on the uh, earlier uh, Governor Doctor mentioned about the uh, consumer uh, consumer protection mechanism. mechanism. Governor Jokno, are you still present? Anyone from BSP can expand. Oh, okay, si Governor, pasensya na po. Ito, matatapos na rin to. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's uh, yeah, Governor. Your Honor, it's a general principle. And uh, just to have a mechanism for consumer protection. It's but a general, the, general statement. Correct, but uh, this is this stem from your learning or from our learning from the first experience in the STV uh, activities. So this is a new feature that uh, is included in the bill. But what 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 is the uh, how do you envision implementing this consumer protection learning from the first experience with the STV law? Well, uh, we have. In general, we have the uh, consumer protection law, right? That, but now uh, we will, we'll, I guess through the IRR, we can issue some, some guidelines on how to protect uh, those who are involved in this um, AMC, Asset Management Corporations. Are we looking to protect, uh, let's say, home borrowers, uh, credit card borrowers? Is, is this is what is uh, envisioned for this provision? Yes, we, I don't. I, I I don't think we should really broaden it so much because it will take away from the uh, from the uh, from the uh, core of the of the uh, fist corporation law. Yeah, I, I, I of course it, when you read it, it sounds. Uh, Sounds politically correct to protect consumers, but I just want to understand which consumers are we are we protecting? Are we prote are we envisioning to protect uh, you know, uh, single borrowers, you know, low income borrowers, or residential borrowers? I am just trying to understand and appreciate that feature that we included. I guess the the uh, we are trying to protect the rights of the borrowers initially. Your Honor, we have a separate uh, bill actually on consumer protection and that, that uh, we can also present to the, to the committee. But uh, this, the one we have envisioned here is just as a general statement, Your Honor. All right. Um, another, uh, well, just clarificatory, um, uh, Governor. Uh, are pawn shops included in the fist app? Yes, they are included. And are we are we uh, are we uh, reporting the NPLs of pawn shops? Don't pawn shops thrive in NPLs? I think that's their business model. We have the uh, pawn shops report to BSP, and so we have a way of figuring out their uh, financial position, Your Honor. But my knee-jerk reaction, uh, uh, Governor, uh, pawn shops thrive in NPLs. I, I think that's their business models. I mean, they would rather have uh, uh, foreclosed uh, assets and foreclosed loans that they can turn around. So having said that, uh, won't, it, won't it be uh, unfair to give them tax break if that is their business model anyways? They have they have lending activities too, uh, so uh, <clears throat> I, 
I think your, your question is whether we have to burden them with so much reports or something like that. No, uh, because the, uh, the way I, I envision how pawn shops will operate in this, in this uh, FIST, FIST law is they can transfer asset uh, using the tax breaks, correct? I mean, they have lending activities. Obviously, those, those assets being uh, uh, collateralized will be foreclosed and they can transfer it to an SPV, to a fish company. Yes. And my, my point is, that's their business model anyways. They're, that's how they earn money is to foreclose assets. Uh, they, uh, you know, we, we want to include the pawn shops because of the REITs. They're, they're, it's, it's not just, uh, this is part of the finance stability concern of the BSP also. And so uh, we, there are, there are, in fact, there are more branches of uh, pawn shops than there are branches of banks, Your Honor. I, I just want to understand, uh, Governor, how pawns, how including pawn shops contribute to the stability of the system, of the banking system? You know, we are now using pawn shops as uh, in the in the remittance business, and they are they are really very helpful. In fact, even in the Bayanihan two, I think they are being they are being used also as uh, as, as intermediaries. Right, for, as intermediaries, right. But I'm just, I'm just trying to understand how pawn shops, from the overall scheme of things, this the bill aims to, to, to create stability in the banking system. But I'm, I'm trying to appreciate how pawn shops, the inclusion of pawn shops in the bill, contributes to that stability. They, they are. They are also lending institutions, Your Honor. So, in in a way, they are also important in financial stability. Do you, the overall financial stability? Uh, All right. I'm, I'm just. Uh, I mean, I, my major question is, uh, uh, their business model is really to to foreclose assets, you know, and um, we might be unduly. Uh, giving them uh, tax break, but that's their business anyways. You know? So that's my major reaction, and uh, we'll probably ask the uh, ask the uh, ask BSP to just submit to us um, the rationale why including BSP, so that uh, I won't belabor the committee anymore. Yes, we will submit the position paper of BSP. All right. Um, that's uh, it for now, um, uh, Madam Chair. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Governor. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Gachalian. Are there any more questions from our colleagues present? Uh, just one last query, um, no, Madam Chair. Go ahead, sir. Yeah. Will we be inviting an organization such as Samahan ng Mga Manguutang? <laughs> Meron ba? <laughs> I'm just Baka kidding. Tayo, tayo. Sir. <laughs> Um, I I will propose I unless there's a, an objection from uh, one of our colleagues here, I propose to adjourn this hearing and just convene as a technical working group later on uh, upon the submission of the other requested documents from our resource persons. Uh, are there any objections for me to adjourn this hearing now from the members of the committee? No. All right. I guess so Governor Jokno can get back to his lunch and all of us as well. <laughs> thank, thank you to our resource persons for your presence here today. Uh, we would like to expedite, of course, the passage of this measure. As we know, uh, it will help uh, the plight of many of our uh, small business owners, investors, etc. So you have the assurance of this committee that we will work as hard and as fast as we can to come up with a bill that is fair and um, effective with the help, of course, of our resource person. So some of you uh, in the group will be asked to participate in our technical working group. I hope you make yourselves available. So with that, this hearing is adjourned. Thank you. Happy birthday, Madam Chair. Bukas pa.
<laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much for hardworking, uh, Madam Chair. And Manang Sincha po, um, alalang-alala ko po, kailangan natin yung SPAV. Kasi alalang-alala ko nung speaker namin si Sir Manny, araw-araw, dasyon and pagod. <laughs> Yun lang ang kanyang kaisa-isang alternative. 